All right, so I want to add a quick addendum to um, to the previous two sections before we go further. So, um, so we'll call this fourteen point say two point five, and uh, let me just call this addendum to double integrals. So the point of this section is twofold, is I want to point out um, a different application for double integrals because when we introduced them, we talked basically about volume. So I wanna talk about what else they could be used for, but also um, this will help us understand when we move to triple integrals next. So just to recall that uh, the double integral So the double integral that we gave with this integral over r of f of x y dA represented the volume under f and above r. And so visually, again, there is f. Let's label our axes. The R is a region in the XY plane, it's down here. And the volume that we're calculating is the volume that's between these. That volume in there. That volume is equal to the integral. So this is great, this is useful. However, integrals, of course, as we know, with single integrals can be used to calculate many other things. So an additional fact, so an additional, let's say use for a double integral would be as follows. So the one thing that makes this nice is it's sort of a two dimensional thing. So what I want you to do is imagine that R in the xy plane is like a very very thin say metal plate which has certain densities at different places so for now let's say imagine that r is a thin metal plate it doesn't have to be metal but whatever this is in the xy plane so So this could be any shape you like. And this our R. So thin is like infinitely thin, arbitrarily thin, um, uniformly thin. Don't worry so much exactly about how thin thin is. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine that the function f of x, y, that this is the, what I'm gonna call this is the, the point mass density. at um, x comma y. So what this means is, um, let me give you an informal terms and then formal terms. Informally, sort of near the point x, y, this is the mass per square unit. So this means that near x, y, the mass is f of x, y. So for example, um, say if f of x, y were say x squared plus y squared, and then if the plane is in centimeters, and if the density is say um, grams, or rather, um, yeah, we could say if the density is gram per square centimeter, then if we say, for example, since f of two one is two squared plus one squared is five, this means, so what this means is that um, near the point two one, like in a very small circle around two one, 
or let's say a small disk around two comma one, the density is five grams per centimeter squared. So what this means is, um, of course, for this particular function, as we go further from the origin, the mass gets denser. Right? So this allows us to have different densities at different points. So F allows us to have different densities at different points. So then we might ask this question is uh, what's the mass of the entire plate? Like what's the mass of R? So the answer to this is given by the double integral. This is nice because it gives us a way of thinking about a double integral that's not necessarily a three-dimensional thing. Now it is because density is the third dimension, but visually I can think of it, we can think of it as a two-dimensional thing. So we can think of this, we can um, think of this as a 2D question. So let me do one example so we can see how this pans out. So going back over, here's a simple example. Suppose we say um, a rectangle has vertices, has corners, say 0, 0, 5, 0, 5, 3, and 0, 3. The density Y is given by, let's say, f of xy equals xy. So, and then we want to say, uh, find the mass. And we'll say, assume centimeters and grams, just so we're consistent with the introduction. So the picture of this picture is totally necessary for this. Well, the picture might help in terms of uh, setting up the integral. So the plate is the R, so the plate looks like this. Goes to five here, goes to three here. There are the four corners. So the mass is then the double integral over r just so we're clear let me label this that is our r so then the mass is the double integral over r of the function xy da then r is vertically simple this becomes we'll do x on the outside zero to five Y on the inside, zero to three, everybody's constant. X, Y, D, Y, D, X. So let's evaluate this so we get a value that means something. So zero to five, integrate with respect to Y. Oops, totally messed that up. Hold on, that one half in there should be a two. So plug in for y, oops, get one half x, plug a three and we get nine, or I'll just write, write three squared minus one half x, zero squared. This is nine over two x. To read that with respect to x, we get 9 fourth x squared. This is 9 fourth 5 squared, which is 25. 
So 9 times 25 is 225 over 4. And this would be in grams. That would be our final answer. So final note to close out this addendum is uh, other than volume and mass, we can also think of double integrals as representing one other thing, and that's area. Now this may seem weird that um, the double integral can give you an area as well as a volume. But the way to think about it is this. So imagine that the function that you integrate is one. And here's the picture. So it's a three dimensional picture. So the function is a plane at a height of one. The region is still a region in the xy plane down here. That is the R. Then what happens is when you calculate the volume, the volume turns out to be equal to the area. Now the units are different, of course, but just in terms of the numbers, since the height is one, the uh, the volume equals the area. For example, um, if the volume were, say, um, five cubic centimeters, then since the height is one centimeter, the uh, area of R is five square centimeters. So the big thing that falls out of this is that the area of R is the double integral over R of 1 dA. Now, this also makes sense in terms of mass as well, because if the density is, say, 1 gram per square centimeter, then the mass is the same as the area. So, makes sense for area, for, um, for mass too, because if the density is, for example, uh, one gram per square centimeter, then the mass equals the area. So what this means is we can work out area problems using double integrals as well. So I'll give you an example real quick. So going back to the left, um, simple example could be say, um, and uh, let me do one that's like really trivial to work out. I'll do like a simple triangle, but it's just demonstration. Say find the area of the, uh, actually let's not do a triangle. Let's do something slightly different. Let's do this. So the shape we'll do will be say something like, so we'll do something that will be nice to do horizontally simple to do a reminder of that. So say something like this shape. So what this will be is, this will go out to nine and this function will be y equals the square root of nine. So the area of the shape and uh, just to be clear, let me be clear about my labeling. This is our R. So what we want to do is we want to find the area. The area, according to the rule here, is the double integral over R of one dA. Now, um, this can be done as vertically simple. Sorry, I have a mistake up there. This is the square root of X. This can be done as a vertically simple region. Um, so as vertically simple, this is zero to nine, zero to square root of x, one dy dx. 
and as horizontally simple. This is a little different because um, this, because uh, let's see, I need to rewrite this as a left and a right function. So if we go back up here to um, to the function, if we look here on the left, this is now the left function instead of the top function. So y equals the square root of x becomes x equals y squared. And the right hand function over here becomes x equals nine. And then the constants are zero and three. So if we do it that way, we get the integral from zero to three. The lower is the left, which is y squared. The upper is the right, which is nine. The function that we still integrate is one, dx dy. These will work out to be the same. The sort of you can make a choice as to which one that you want. The second one has the advantage is that there are no roots in it. The first one has the advantage in that um, both of your integrals are from zero to something. So that's a little nicer. But let's just work out the horizontally simple one. Just for all the variety. So this is zero to three. Integrate with respect to x, we get x. Plug those in for x. Integrate with respect to y. Nine my nine y minus one third y cubed. Plug in the three. Plug in zero, we get zero, so we won't worry about that. So this is twenty-seven. 3 cubed is 27 over 3 is 9, so this is 18. And so, for example, if the plane were measured in centimeters, this would be square centimeters. So, in a final note, something to keep in mind is that, that double integrals can represent volume, they can represent mass, and they can represent area. So let me just do a really, really brief summary on the right. So, for summary, is that um, this double integral can represent um, volume under F and above R. This double integral can represent mass of R if F is density. And this double integral, when we integrate one, specifically, this gives the area of R. So keep all three of those things in mind. When we move into 14.4 next, the second one, or sorry, the, the, yeah, the second one will be the most useful, right? So something to keep in mind because it um, generalizes to three dimensions very nice. This will be useful. when we go to triple integrals. Um, in fact, the second, the third one rather will also be useful. The first one also, uh, also useful. The first one will not be that useful when we go to triple integrals because the, um, the idea of a volume doesn't scale up nicely, but the second two, the, the second and the third will make the most sense. So that's the end of the addendum, done.